Hi everybody, welcome to Elementary Classical Mechanics, the subject where observing the universe suggests new mathematical and computational approaches that can literally transform our way of modeling and predicting any aspect of the world. Welcome back to Chapter 5, the third lecture, where we're going to continue solving Newton's equations in one dimension for specific force laws. Okay, this is where I ended up with last time. This is a really important and interesting case when the force depends only on the position. So Newton's equations in this case are given by this. And we're going to define a new function. Now, what motivates us to do that? We're going to learn about this as we go along. There's some physical motivations, but for now, let V of S be the negative indefinite integral. Well, no, we're going to put a constant at the lower limit. So minus integral from C to S, C is an arbitrary constant. Which constant? Arbitrary, anything right now. F of S prime dS prime. Okay, now with this definition, Newton's equation look like this. M d squared s dt squared equals minus dv ds. All right, now some, comes something very important. I don't know where this solution, this function came from. m over 2 s dot squared plus v of s, but we're going to multiply, or sorry, we're going to differentiate it with respect to time. And if we do that using the chain rule, s dot comes out and we get s dot times the quantity m s double dot plus dv ds equals zero. Why is it zero? Because this is zero. It follows directly from Newton's equations. That means that this function is constant in time on solutions of Newton's equation. Now all those words are very important. You take a solution of Newton's equation, s of t, and you plug it into this function. And that function is constant on that S of t. So this is what it means. Now, this m over 2 s dot squared plus v of s we're going to see that this is related to the notion of total energy. This will be a kinetic energy and this will be a potential energy, but that's to come in a couple of chapters. So, oh, how does this help us solve? Well, if we fix this constant, we have, we can solve for s dot squared, sorry, we can, yes, and we can solve for s dot ds dt, and we can integrate that and get s as a function of t. And we'll see how that works more explicitly in a lot of different areas of the course to come, in phase plane analysis, in the work energy uh, relation, all sorts of things. This is your first introduction to this. OK, let's go back to the next force law. Suppose f is a function of s dot and t? Well, we can try the same trick we had earlier. We can plug in to the equation s dot equals u because it looks kind of like first order in s dot. And it is. And we get this equation here. Okay. Can we solve that? It's just a first order nonlinear equation. Sadly, not all first order nonlinear time dependent equations can be solved explicitly. However, if the right hand side is linear, even if it if the coefficients depend on time, we can solve it only in the first order case in general. 
And I believe the first person to come up with this approach was Bernoulli. And this is one of the things, one of the examples you would learn in your first calculus course or uh, ODE course, um, where you solve first order equations that are linear with time variable or variable coefficients. Okay. It's very involved. But now what if f depends on s and t? Nope, that is a complicated equation in general if it's nonlinear function. In fact, there are examples of functions like that, force laws, where the resulting Newton's equations are chaotic. We'll maybe touch on that later. But if the right-hand side is linear and A is constant, but B of T can be time-dependent, that can be solved. Finally, the most general form uh, of equation, which is nonlinear, no, no way. Function of S, S dot, and T. Um, so how do we get information about that? Good question. We'll come to that later. Life is not completely hopeless, and many smart people have helped us with these things, notably Poincaré. But if the right-hand side is linear and the coefficients multiplying s and s dot are constant, but we have c can vary in time, we can solve that analytically. And that's one of the examples you learn about in your first exposure to ODEs in calculus. Okay, that's everything, all the material for chapter five. And next time, I want to talk about the problems at the end of the chapter. It's a really good problem set, that you sh and you should do all of them. Okay, see you next time. Bye.